Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. Mm, sorry, it was a little late from the last uh, lecture. I want to apologize for delay, actually a long delay to uploading new topics and issues. Uh, but it is very tough time and as we know all of us involved with this crisis of COVID-19 I thought to myself it's better we I prepare a lecture about echocardiography protocol with this group of patients and later very soon I'm going to upload other topics and issues very soon our behavior and uh, manner to dealing with such patient is affect a lot what we believe and our knowledge about the disease. There are a lot of misconceptions that affect our behavior. I would like to mention some of them. First of all, the mortality rate that even out is generally we say low and is two percent. But don't forget, this is mortality rate in general population of people that involved and affected by a virus. As you know, 70 to 80 percent of those people that catch the virus, COVID-19, they are asymptomatic or they have very slight symptom and sign and by itself disappear and cure. But 20 to 80 percent of those patients has significant symptom and sign and disease that half of them they need hospitalized. The mortality rate of those patients that has needed to hospitalized is between 20 to 40 percent. Even in some category of the patient, above 60 percent. So it's not low when we are dealing because all those cases that we are going to do echo and dealing with them are in this category so the mortality rate just not a number at general population we have to see the case fatality and infection fatality rate there are a lot of difference just clear your mind is not a easy or light disease it's serious infection and unfortunately as you heard and read and noticed even many of those healthcare staffs in, uh, caught that infection and unfortunately some percentage of them die from this disease that many of those colleagues were young not old second misconception is about the type of this infection is the COVID-19 is droplet or airborne infection dependent from which aspect you want to see as a general definition any time that the pathogen agent can be alive in our cell uh, with the size of less than 100 micrometer they are considered airborne infection now Based on the ACA, uh, ASE, American Society of Echocardiography, and CDC, generally COVID-19 we consider as a droplet infection, except those cases that uh, create aerosol, <clears throat> like uh, ventilator. The patient are on one ventilator. They use CPAP, BiPAP, TEE bronchoscopy, trachostomy, and all other invasive things that can create aerosol and in air. But based on the all uh, result and research that has been done in around the world, especially in China, Italy, and Spain, WHO on March 18, 2020, announced that we should consider COVID-19 as an airborne infection, not droplet infection. Now, when we are going to scan this patient, first we have to protect ourselves. What does our protect? Besides of the gloves and gown and 
cover, uh, shoes cover, we need the most important part, mask. Surgical mask is not for prevention us. It's only prevention to transmit it, any particle, respiratory particle from user to the other person. Even thought as a droplet, it can prevent droplet, but it's not efficient in these cases. One of the best protection equipment is N95 or N99. Up to 90-90%, this type of the mask can prevent to catching virus that is in the air. But if we have equipment, enough equipment in your facility, the best equipment is powered air purifying respiratory, as you see here, that we call pepper. That there are two types, one of them is loose fit, just cover the face head, or no, we use a collar type. That's if we have in facility again, the collar type is much better. It's all dependent of your facility and equipment is available. What about the cardiac manifestation of COVID? Unfortunately, 20 to 30 percent of patient COVID-19 that means hospitalized, they get uh, cardiac involvement uh, as a myocarditis. That this is directly invasion of the virus to the myocardium cells or uh, immune reaction to the virus. It can be both of them. The most presentation of myocarditis is acute injury to myocardial cell that it can be uh, detect by increasing uh, troponin T and in some studies shows that there is a linear correlation between increasing TNT and CRP. So if in those cases that we don't have access to the TNT, we can use CRP as a factor and criteria for detecting if there is any myocarditis. Besides of that, we have uh, changes, electric EKG uh, changes. We may be see due to the myocarditis, we can see arrhythmia, especially uh, VT, and sometimes bradycardia or AFib or any kind of the arrhythmia. We can see pericardial effusion, hypo or hypertension, and some cases that especially those patients has coronary artery disease background, it can exaggerate or exacerbate those disease and even cause heart attack. Now, when we are uh, going to uh, deal with these cases, we have to consider some uh, tips and some uh, matters. First, as much as possible, we have to postpone all elective study uh, on these patients if there is not emergency or urgency for doing echo. The most uh, important indications for this uh, echocardiogram in patient with COVID-19 is arrhythmia, CHF, chest pain, and laboratory finding that uh, show evidences of myocarditis, especially uh, elevation of the troponin. The echocardiogram of this patient should be done in an isolated neg with negative pressure room. So, depending on, again, in your facility, some uh, hospital on center, they don't have such things, especially when we are at the peak of the uh, uh, infection, we, we are short of the bed, and you can imagine, even we sometimes, some hospital, even they don't have PPE enough, we can imagine we don't have any negative pressure. But in ideal situation, the patient should be isolated in a, hospitalized in isolated room with negative pressure. This echocardiogram study on this patient should be done by those echotech that are very well experienced and they know exactly what they need to do and get it done very fast. Echocardiogram in this patient should be less than 
in, in five to ten minutes shorter better that is the we are going to talk how we can get all those study and finding we need for this type of study for this matter just always remember we don't measure any things when we are doing echocardiogram on bedside of the patient all measurement should be done later out of the uh, patient rooms is uh, prefer in the department not in the room what is the protocol for this patient any kind of any patient with confirmed COVID-19 or they have strong suspicions about uh, COVID-19 we have to do follow this protocol first we go for plaques we get a uh, far field view for routing and checking pleural effusion and pericardial effusion uh, before I, I, I forgot to mention I prefer to set up recording for two bits or better two seconds after far field we go to the regular plaques and then put it color compare to the on mitral valve and aorta is that the same at the same image we will see uh, one side 2d and another side image uh, color so we save the time and uh, our image then we go for the tagic view or rbit flu view and if there is any uh, tr we go con uh, continuous wave on the tr if it's not parallel, don't do that. You don't need to do continuous wave with the cursor. If your jet is not parallel to the TR, don't do continuous wave. It's wasting time. From there, without any measurement, we jump to the PSAX. On PSAX, we don't need to go aortic valve level and all valves only if we saw any significant finding on plaques, on mitral, and or in the uh, aortic valve otherwise we skip the aortic or basal view of the valves we just go for the uh, mitral valve level papillary valve apex for wall motion abnormality the most important things we have to do evaluate in this patient so we go just mitral valve level to the papillary, mo uh, papillary muscle and apical uh, level after that we go for the apical four chamber we do it color compare again on the mitral valve and uh, tricuspid valve we don't need to do continuous anything uh, on the uh, on the mitral valve just only if there is a significance stenotic ms stenotis or mr otherwise we don't need to do continuous after that we go do diastolic evaluation that we needed one parse doppler on the mitral valve and then septal tdi at least for lateral if you don't have good windows for lateral tdi don't waste your time and forget it on, unless you are suspicious of constrictive and restrictive cardiomyopathy and constrictive pericarditis otherwise you don't need to waste time for lateral tdi just medial or septal is enough after that we go for the right ventricular for right ventricular if you can get it without any wasting time go off axis focus on right ventricular free wall show it that image and then tap c and tdi of lateral tv analysis if you have tr get it tvr continuous wave and measure for the right atrial pressure after that we go apical 5 apical 5 in most pay cases we don't need to do apical 5 chamber only if there was some significant finding on plaques that we saw it then on here uh, you can do it continuous and parse uh, continuous on aortic valve and parse way on the lvot another time you maybe you do a doctor study on apical 5 is when you see some compromising of left ventricular function for example you will see ef uh, decrease by eyeball guessing and or you see wall motion uh, that time is not bad idea but it's not necessary and not mandatory do doctor on the 
aortic valve on and LVOT. After that, we just go for wall motion. We get apical two and three. If you had time and you had good windows, do it color, otherwise without color. You don't need to do those stuff. At the end, you go subcostal. If you have less, you can get it less than five to 10 seconds. Long access for chamber, get it. Otherwise, don't waste more time, more than five to 10 seconds. Then you go I, uh, line IVC and do it 2D. Forget about a mode for respiratory variation. You can evaluate uh, respiratory variation collapses, collapsibility of the IVC with 2D2. That is enough. That is your echo protocol in patient with confirm or strongly suspicious to COVID-19. Now let's go the protocol for limited studies. There are many times that the doctor uh, they want just uh, go and evaluate it for some specific parameter that the most important of them are first left ventricular ejection fraction. Many times the uh, patient is known case then just the doctor want to see if the uh, EF and left ventricular function has changed or not or just uh, they want to use in good uh, condition or not. They don't need all full study. Left ventricular ejection, ejection EF uh, uh, study, limited study, include all this view and study. First, you as a re regular, you go far field for routing pericardial and pleural effusion. Then you go flax without any color, Doppler, any, uh, any things. Then even you, you don't need to measurement. Then you go PZAC at popular level. If you saw something on plaques, some wall segment abnormality, wall motion abnormality, it's not bad idea. On the PZAC, you do uh, on the mitral level, level, popular muscle, and apical level. Otherwise, if it on the plaques was okay, you don't need to get at those other two levels. Then you go for wall motion and measuring Simpson you get apical four, two, and three chamber. Then, beside of this is systolic evaluation, we go for the osteolic evaluation. We do it mitral valve, pars doppler, and tedia on medial at least, or both medial and lateral annulus of mitral valve. Then, if it's not patient, is not uh, COVID-19, uh, is regular, we do a Simpson on apical four and apical two chamber. And the, the other one is evaluation of right ventricular function, that we can do it by uh, TAPC and TDI of the lateral uh, tricuspid valve annulus. And the final things is IVC measurement and collapsibility. That was a protocol for LVEF, then another, Limited study is pericardial effusion. When the doctor uh, pu uh, put it request for rule out in cardiac tamponade or evaluation pleural effusion. The main concern about this uh, rule out, uh, first of all, confirming pericardial effusion if there is any. Second, rule out in cardiac tamponade. So for this matter, we go first far field plaques check the, uh, any kind of fluid around the heart. If there was, we do it measurement on the M mode or 2D. And uh, if there was fluid, we do it M mode on the right ventricular. Uh, at the, the, almost the same level of the mitral valve M mode because it crossed the right ventricular free wall. We can check the collapsibility of the free right ventricular wall in that window view. Then we go PZAX, we do M mode at the uh, level of the right ventricular. If you see the right ventricular, you put wall, uh, cursor parallel, perpendicular to the free wall of the right ventricular, and you can see if there is any flattening of the septum or not. After that, we go for apical two, four, two, three, for wall motion and evaluation of the ejection fraction. The most important part of the study for uh, pericardial effusion or cardiac component 
is respiratory variation. As I explained in other lecture, first you have to decrease the speed and then you put horse Doppler at the mitral valve level and tricuspid, uh, at least and tricuspid uh, valve. Then if you have good windows on my, uh, middle hepatic vein is much better. If still you have time and you can see a little, uh, you, you like to do extra study, you can do it evaluation of respiratory variation on the aortic valve too. After uh, evaluation of respiratory variation, we do a mode on posterior wall of right uh, atrium in apical four. Just you have to put the cursor uh, perpendicular to the wall of the posterior wall of the right atrium. Then you go to the subcostal long axis view and show there is any fluid or not. If there was fluid, you have to put a uh, mode on perpendicular of the right ventricular free wall and show if there is any collapsibility on the right ventricular free wall. And the final and important uh, view is IVC, evaluation IVC by 2D and M mode. Another uh, limited study in echocardiogram is pulmonary embolism. For this, the, the main important cons, concern about the echocardiogram, echocardiography on this patient is detecting this, if there is any cardiac source of the blood clot, evaluating of right ventricular function, and finding the evidences for pulmonary embolism, and finally, left ventricular function. For that matter, first we go plaques and we measure uh, RVOT, if especially it looks like enlarged. Then we go for the modify and non-modify pulmonary artery or pulmonary valve view with color. Many times, not many times, sometimes maybe we can see any blood clot at the saddle or the main pulmonary artery or one of the branch at that modify and non-modify uh, pulmonary uh, artery view. Then from there, we go for PSAX at the base or uh, valves level. We measure RVOT and pulmonary artery root at the pulmonary valve uh, annulus. Diameter, we then we go put color on the pulmonary artery. Try to open the bifurcation of the right and left, especially saddle. Uh, uh, saddle is part of bifurcation. Sometimes we can see the blood clot and in that spot or in the right or left pulmonary artery. From there, we go jump to the PSAX at papillary muscle just for evaluation, mitral, uh, myocardial left ventricular wall motion and ejection fraction. Then we go for apical four and two. 2D and we go for the uh, EF measurement by Simpson. After that, we go for the right ventricular focus view that I explained in other uh, lectures. Then you have to measure right uh, ventricular at the base, mid and left uh, right ventricular length. Especially when you are in eyeball, you see right ventricular, if you are in the good view, good window and correct window, and you see right ventricular sizes looks like the same size of the left ventricular or larger, 100% don't forget measuring those parameters of right ventricular, those three. At, after that, you go and focus on the apex of right ventricular. So decrease your depth, and maybe use zoom at the apex of the heart and show the apex of the right ventricular if there is Macaulay sign or not. After that, we do TAPC and uh, TDI on the tricuspid valve annulus, lateral annulus, for giving us a uh, evaluation of right ventricular function, systolic function. 
after that we have to try give it a shot many times different view of access get it uh, tr as much as possible and we measure uh, put color and continuous on tr and measure tr gradient and final uh, view is 2d with color on ivc and measurement The last two limited study are impella, left ventricular impella and right ventricular impella or impella RP. Impella is a assistant device that we use temporarily for uh, left ventricular or right ventricular. It's the artificial uh, pump, a device to pump blood from the left ventricular or right ventricular to the artery. Here we have a, a impeller, left ventricular impeller, the position and uh, the structure. The main part of the impeller is one cannula that the pump structure is at the end of this and main uh, catheter shaft. That this catheter shaft goes through the artery and this part goes to the inside of the heart, aorta and uh, left ventricular. The tip of the uh, impella has many details and uh, many parts. First, end of that is the uh, pigtail that is curving, plastic. It contacts to the free wall of uh, left ventricular and it stabilizes the end of the uh, canule. That, this is canule and this is pigtail. At the tip of the uh, canule, we have an orifice, we call it inlet area, the blood suck through this orifice and go through the catheter and push outside through this uh, orifice, we call outlet, and here beyond the outlet uh, area or orifice, we have pump or motor, uh, the engine of the pump. So the blood goes through the inlet and go out through the outlet. That this outlet is inside of the aortic artery, ascending aortic artery beyond the aortic valve. Don't forget this uh, catheter is uh, not rigid, is plastic and soft. So when we are going to, especially interventionist, when they change the position of the impeller in the heart, this catheter is soft and flexible. I will explain later what is effect on those uh, when we evaluate impella and reposition, especially for reposition of the impella. What is the effect of this uh, material? What we do, we are going, the most important uh, study on impella is first, evaluation of left ventricular function, second, the location of impeller is the impeller is right location. The criteria for here is a different type of the impeller. We have 2.55 CP RP that for right ventricular and LD. This is the machine automated regulation machine that uh, beside of the detecting the location is that right side right location or not. It give and uh, regulate how much fast the pump work and uh, the flu, the pattern of the flu goes in and out of the uh, canoe and the pump. What is the protocol for uh, impeller, left ventricular impeller? The most important, first we have to see the location. For this matter, we have two options or three, actually three options. The best option is on the plaques. On the plaques, we can find the, this inlet area as a drop out, drop out, drop out uh, in the echo. Then we measure from the middle of the, this drop out here, inlet, in other words, inlet area, to the ring of the aortic valve. This measurement in the normal and the ideal should be between three to four. 3.5 to 4 centimeter. That is the best location for left ventricular impella. If we cannot see on the plaques, 
we have to go and try it, give it shot in the apical five chamber. If it's not in apical five chamber, we go try it in apical three chamber. Finally, one of those give you a right and correct uh, image that you can measure the distance and location, and location of the impeller. Beside of the location and those three, we are going to do PZAX on, my, uh, on the left ventricular at the level of papillary muscle or sometime if you can go to the tip and base and then apical four and two chamber for evaluation of ventricular. Uh, this is all protocol for the left ventricular impeller. You see how it looks like in the echo. Here we have uh, a patient with uh, LV impeller. As you notice on 2D, there is a drop out here. You will see here an echo. And even if you a little focus and be a little suspicious, there are some uh, reverberation. I will show in another clips the version. It this reverberation is really clear. So this is our tip or inlet inlet area. Then we have to show it exactly where is the aortic valve annulus. It's not clear. So I am not going to uh, uh, measure on this image because it's not very clear aortic valve ring and only we have tip or inlet orifice clear. Many times if you cannot see it with putting color on that, that area, you can see uh, mosaic pattern as you see here because there is a turbulence there uh, and you can see that turbulence area is exactly inlet of the catheter. If it doesn't, you cannot see, decrease the scale uh, and change the gain, it show up easily. Here, in that case, you, you could you can see here in apical five very clearly. You see uh, drop of here, drop of at that spot. There you go, and you can see mosaic pattern at this spot. The same correspond with the color. And here, if you notice, this is aortic valve. So we are going to measure from middle of this uh, inlet to the aortic valve. This is our measurement and location of the impeller. Why we use that uh, 3.5 to 4 centimeter? Because if we go too much in uh, the tip of the impeller can damage the papillary muscle or corda tendini. If we go too much far, uh, in other words, out toward the uh, aortic valve, it goes to the area of LVOT and that orifice covered by the sigmoid uh, septum or anterior mitral valve leaflet. So they block the orifice at that, those two spots. So we shouldn't go, that is the reason we use it uh, uh, 3.5 to 4 centimeter for measurement and correct location. Here, as you notice, it's very short and orifice, inlet orifice is almost close, is less than 2 centimeter if you measure it to the aortic valve uh, ring. Here is the same patient, the other, uh, the previous patient. You can measure it exactly here. First of all, we can see reverberation. Second, there is a drop of very clear, but we don't see aortic valve ring, but a little, if you are a suspicious person, you can see this is aortic valve ring. Here, you can see the sucking, uh, this uh, orifice, inlet orifice, sucking the sigmoid to that area. It can damage or stimulate, not damage actually, stimulate that part of myocardium and can cause arrhythmia too. In some cases, you don't have option, you don't have any good windows uh, on the transthoracic. In those time for uh, correct uh, checking the location of the impeller. We don't have an, uh, any other option. Just we go trans 
uh, esophageal echocardiogram. In that case, we can see very clearly the drop of tip inlet, aliasing, and turbulence or mosaic pattern at that spot, aortic uh, valve ring, and then we measure from there. Here, it's measured tip, but it's better measured from middle to the aortic ring. But it doesn't affect too much on our measurement because between 3.5, here is 3.75. Uh, seven, uh, Even if we bring it here, it's almost 3. Point, that's fine. Uh, here, as you notice, depending on this, what type of the uh, what type of the impeller you use, the measurement is different, the, the best location. Here we have LD impeller, the correct uh, location distance is from the tip to the aortic and it should be between 3 to, 3 to 4.5. In other type, it should be 3.5 to 4 centimeter. Here we have uh, the last one is right ventricular impeller or uh, RP impeller. For uh, as you notice, this impeller is different. It will be uh, insert through the IVC femoral uh, femoral vein and then go through the IVC. Uh, from there, uh, pass through the tricuspid valve, RVOT, and finally the tip pass through the pulmonary valve. So this is the location of impella in uh, right ventricular impella. So for evaluation of location of this kind of the uh, impella, we have to do show two spots, inlet area and outlet area. So for those, it's very easy. We have to go for the PSAX pulmonary view, modify and non-modify, and put color, you can check drop out that spot on those view and if you need it put color you can see mosaic it should be beyond one to two centimeter above the or beyond the pulmonary valve for the uh, inlet area you go for the ivc in the subcostal and in the pzax maybe in pzax at the tricuspid level you can see it any of them that work, that's enough. Uh, we are okay, even subcostal. As long as you see that area entrance of the IVC to the right atrium, you just get that image. Any windows, you can find it. Then put color and see mosaic pattern and drop off. Uh, that is your inlet uh, inlet area. So it blood suck the blood from the IVC or right atrium and pump to the pulmonary artery. After those uh, detecting, we, we don't have measurement. If, if you want and you have good windows and good view, you can measure at the inlet to the mitre, uh, pulmonary valve at that uh, modify or non-modify uh, pulmonary artery view. Otherwise, we don't need measurement. We just, we have to show that inlet and inlet and outlet, they are in right location. After that, we just go to uh, two, apical two, four, three for left ventricular, uh, just in case if there was any changes on the left ventricular function too. Then we do it, tap C and tissue doppler of the right ventricular as usual. It was uh, very short and very fast of uh, echocardiography protocol for the COVID-19 patients and some limited study. I hope it is useful. Have a great day.